Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be experimenting with DMEs and actually using them to determine where we are in the sky. So our next series of videos is basically going to be dedicated to figuring out where you are so that you can make uh, accurate navigational calculations, you know, no matter what's going on around you. So the first method that we're going to use today is actually going to be using two circles, kind of like a GPS does, in order to actually figure out where we are in the world. So um, let's go ahead and experiment a little bit with this particular concept. So the method we're going to use today is basically using the distance we are from a DME station comparing that against the distance from another station, drawing two large circles, and then finding where those two sets of circles actually intersect. I'm gonna go ahead and pause myself in the air real quick, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take a look at what we have in our nearby area. Now, uh, first things first, uh, what I am gonna do is I'm gonna disable the view of the aircraft, so uh, as we're doing some of this stuff, we can't really cheat. So let me go ahead and change my view for you folks real fast. All right, here we go. So uh, right now you can see that we're somewhere, of course, in uh, my home state, which is uh, Connecticut. And we have a couple VOR stations, and we need to figure out where on earth or where in Connecticut we are. So what I'm going to do is use multiple VORs in order to go ahead and not use them for their radial, but use them for their distance. So I notice Putnam VOR here is uh, it's actually going to be a VOR to me, has a frequency of 117.40. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over here. I'm actually going to make my life a little bit simpler. Ah, it doesn't work that way. So I'm going to go ahead and flip my modes here and go ahead and say 117.40. And we're going to flip this over. So the first thing that I'm going to get is I'm going to notice that my distance to that DME or that VOR is a total of eight nautical miles. Now, what am I going to do with this information? Well, let's head back over here. So I'm actually going to go up into my settings here. I'm going to go ahead to map. I'm going to delete all this. I'm going to get myself a single range ring at eight nautical miles from Putnam VOR. So I know I am somewhere inside of this arc here. So, unfortunately, I don't know where I am in this arc. Of course, using a little bit of deduction, I could probably look down at the bottom of the plane and identify exactly where I am. But instead, uh, what I want to try to do is use another VOR and see if I can basically triangulate my position. So I'm going to go take a look over here. I've got PVD here. This is at 115.60. Let's go ahead and try that as well. I'll go to 115.60. Flip it. And let's see what we get for a distance here, 23 nautical miles. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to go back up in the same method I do. In the old days, we drew this on a piece of paper. It's a bit of an involved process, but fortunately for us, we don't have to worry about that today. Boing. And now we have two intersecting points. We know we can either be right here or we can be right here. It's actually not possible for us to be anywhere else on this particular position. Again, we're only using our distance here. We're not using anything special beyond that. So because of deduction here, you probably think we're right here, although it's quite possible we could be up here. But again, if you have a pretty good running fix, you're gonna have a pretty good idea of where we are. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on visibility of the aircraft for a second here, and voila you notice that we're actually very, very, very close to our estimated point, which is right here. Now, you're probably saying, well, what if we wanted to make this a little bit more accurate? Let's go ahead and hide the airplane a little bit. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, kind of sneak the plane off, a little, put a little bit of distance on this plane real quickly. Let's go ahead and sneak this way. I'll go ahead and unfreeze myself here. Looks like I've accidentally sped myself up, but that's all right. Let's go ahead and get myself a little bit of altitude. Really, really difficult to uh, not whistle Indiana Jones every time I do this, but that's all right myself a little bit of distance it's kind of kind of head west here get myself a little bit more I'll show you an even more accurate way to do this delightful Boop. let's go ahead and take ourselves another fix so let's see here we now know we're 24 nautical miles away from pvd so what i'm going to do here again in the old days you got out your little tiny dividers you measured out that distance and you spun a circle so with your compass actually so let's go ahead and go up to here we're going to set this to 24 nautical miles press ok i'm going to go ahead and uh, create that little range ring again and you can see I'm somewhere along this arc. So now let's go ahead and switch over to Putnam real quick. By the way, having these preset make your life much simpler. It's 11 nautical miles. Let's go ahead and dial this in. I'll go ahead and dial this into 11 nautical miles. Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and right click on this one and go ahead and add myself a range ring. So we know, again, through deduction that we must be somewhere right here. But we're actually going to kick it up a notch and make this even more effective of a measurement by getting one more station to give us its uh, distance. So we're going to do 111.0. Actually, I think that's one. Yep, yeah, 110.00. 110.00. Set this up to 00. Switch. And that gets us a distance of 14 nautical miles. So I'll set 14, press OK. Go ahead and right click on this and go ahead and say add range rings. Now check this out. 
there's only one place where these come close to intersecting, which makes me believe that I'm going to be somewhere in the middle of this fake little triangle that we've come. Now, anybody who does any uh, uh, navigation in the world of the nautical probably recognizes this triangle here. Now, obviously, we want to try to get ourselves as close to the center. Let's estimate. Now, again, I'm just going to add myself a fake little user point here. We're going to make this temporary. Let's call this fix two. I'm going to press OK, and let's see how close we were. Not bad. You can see our total distance off here. If we wanted to just quickly measure that, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's measure distance from here. It was about 0.6 nautical miles. Now that's actually not bad. Now, some of you are probably saying, well, this is actually pretty cool, but if you've already got a DME and a VOR, this is absolutely pointless. You can just measure your distance basically based off of a single radial. You're absolutely correct. And as a matter of fact, there's another problem you're going to have with this technique. And that's going to be the fact, and this is kind of annoying, that you have something called magnetic deviation to deal with. Now, in this particular part of the world, magnetic deviation is more or less vertical. But when you move horizontally with your stations, you will cause yourself to slowly read a progressively less accurate measurement. Remember, VOR stations are based on magnetic courses as opposed to true courses. Meaning, unfortunately, if we were all the way over here and we took a fix off a of PVD, we'd have all sorts of new problems. There is another issue which makes this very challenging, and that's the fact that when you're using this particular technique, you're at the mercy of the fact distance is measured to you regardless of your altitude. So if we're at 10,000 feet, your distance is going to measure slightly different than if you're at 1,000 feet, which is going to be a common issue that you'll see when you're trying to take fixes using radio instruments. So again, you can see this is not bad of a fix. And as we move along, we could go ahead and set ourselves up and take multiple fixes and be able to carefully calculate where we are at all time. Now, what makes this even more powerful is that as we're doing these kinds of fixes, we can use this as one of the techniques that we use for our actual flight. Now, some of you are probably going, you know, can you take advantage of this? And actually, yes, you can. Let's say that the Putnam VOR was out of service for some particular reason, and we wanted to fly all the way to Putnam, this particular VR for whatever reason, maybe there's an airport or something there. We could actually, and this is a very interesting way to do this, measure a DME distance of, let's say we got 23 nautical miles to this, and then fly this aircraft until we measure 23 nautical miles away from here, and then keep that 23 nautical miles as we fly in a generally north northeastern direction. This would mean we would fly along this arc. So not only are we going to be able to keep a reliable distance from the destination, but we'll still be able to find that point on the ground, even though we aren't necessarily knowing exactly where it is using a radial. Um, some approach plates actually use this particular technique. So again, this is kind of a slick little method that you can use using just DMEs and, of course, a little nav, um, nav map in order to calculate where you are. Of course, some of you might say, um, why don't you just use the simulated position here? Well, some folks like to actually draw this stuff out. Speaking of drawing these things out, some of you might recognize one of these, which is a plotting paper. What you would actually do with this is you'd use this to manually plot your position and basically have your lines of latitude here. And calculating your longitude is a little more involved. You'd have to actually use your dividers here to actually measure depending on what part of the world you are as far as the equator goes to accurately be able to calculate your latitude and longitude. Now, this is a little beyond the scope of what we're taking a look at. But if for those of you who like the added challenge, there's actually a great video on how to set up one of these particular pieces of paper, even for the purposes of aerial navigation. All right, hopefully this video is helpful as far as a finding a fix using either a two or three individual VOR stations. And uh, later on, we're going to take a look at other ways to identify where we are in the air. Enjoy.